Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Well Groomed, and we are going to work on page four and five right now. And this is a little bit of a complicated page, so <laughs> you might want to watch ahead and then start your construction. Um, it, it's just a, it's a, just a little unusual. So I've done something similar to this, but um, part of what's adding the complexity is some of we're going to do some insetting of the flaps so there's going to be some additional measuring okay you're going to start with your eight by ten pocket page the openings are to the left and right and then i want you to draw a reference line on the left and right hand side um, is that right hmm. actually you only need to draw it on the left hand side yeah so you actually don't need this reference line. Sorry about that. I had to go back and forth on the um, the construction on this a few times and I left this mark. So we can take that off. Okay. There's three flaps and one pocket. So flap A, and that's how it's labeled on the cut list. Flap A is five and a half by eight. Five and a half by eight, you're gonna score a half inch. And I have to think about page four four yeah so it's going to go for page four it's going to go on the left hand side for page five it'll go on the right hand side so instead of going flush to the edge you're going to bring it in a half inch and you're going to install it right here okay and then i have to think about this for a second so what i want to do before i install it is i'm going to put these decorative strips on the edge so i'm going to install this strip first and then when I put the flap on, it's gonna slightly overlap this strip instead of trying to get a strip tucked under it after it's installed. Now I just made these strips a half inch wide um, just because they're easy to handle in the trimmer at a half inch. So it means it's gonna go slightly over the reference line that you drew. Now, part of the reason I had to go through those reference lines too is I was uh, revalidating all my fits uh, to make sure I didn't have to make any adjustments in the flap measurements. Okay, so there's your half inch strip. Now we're going to install this um, right at the half inch mark. I'm going to go ahead and pull my um, Sorry, I'm concentrating my Tim Holtz in, and I'm gonna draw my reference line. So you can see, hopefully, I'm gonna bring it up to you. You can see there's my reference line. That's where the flap hinge is gonna get installed right there. So this half inch strip is gonna be slightly tucked behind this flap. <clears throat> sideways. So this is what I call flap A. There we go. Okay. It looks like it's hanging off just a little tiny bit, so I might come back and trim that. Okay, so the next flap is flap B. Flap B is 10, 10 by eight, 10 by eight. You're gonna score it half inch and five and a half, half inch and five and a half. And it's gonna look like this, okay? This hinge is gonna get installed right here and it's basically going to extend this flap, okay? So it's gonna get installed just like so. Now we're gonna install this flap, and I thought I had marked this, but I guess I didn't, uh, one inch in. So I'm going to use my ruler, and I'm gonna put a one inch reference line, and that's where I'm gonna install the flap. There's my reference line. I'm going to install my hinge right against that reference line. It is, that doesn't look right, does it? I was going to say it's one inch. And I, I'm glad I double checked because it's, um, I did three quarters of an inch. It, I did it too short. And it's going to get covered 
Now I do want to erase the edges because they will show, but the rest of it won't. So let me do that one more time. There we go. There's the one inch mark. So there's my one inch mark. I'm going to install this tape and this hinge right here. And before I do that, I've got this pocket, which is five and a half by four and a half, five and a half by four and a half, and you're going to score on three sides. And before I actually adhere this, I just want to do a quick test and make sure that my pocket is still going to fit, and it does. So we're good. So we're just checking it. it. In theory, if you guys are doing everything I'm doing, this should fit. But it's always good to go ahead and check your pocket before you put your tape on. Okay, I'm going to turn this sideways so I can see end to end. Okay, so let me show you the profile. So here we go. So we've got the first flap A and this is flap B. And you can see there's an inch, a half inch hinge, and there's that half inch mark that we've inset it. So again, there's the top view, okay? Now flap C is five and a quarter by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the five and a quarter side and it's gonna get installed on the right-hand side. And you're gonna install it flush with the edge of the page. And I'm gonna turn it so I can see it. So it is going to go right here. Okay. Now, on flap C, on the hinge side, draw a reference line at a half inch and then you're gonna install your paper, and then I'm gonna remeasure it and put my um, half inch mark on top of my strip of paper, and then we'll install that last flap, the flap C. I mean, I'm sorry, did I say that right? I think I did that wrong. Ugh, let me think, be right back. Okay, sorry about the interruption. Oops, I had to rethink a few things. I designed this page and set it aside, and so I forgot a few things. So, so far, um, we have the A flap and the B flap, or the extension, and then the C flap, which is going in flush with um, the edge of the pocket page. <clears throat> so, the way it's going to close is this flap is going to close. Yeah, this flap is going to close on top of this lip and hold it in place, and then this will close down. So the next thing I want to go ahead and do, since I've already cut the strip, is lay in my half inch strip that goes right here. And what I'm looking for is to have that stri stripe pattern repeated across the, um, the design. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that in. And I've got some pencil marking down here, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. This page will be color blocked. The C panel will be color blocked. So I just wanna get that in. Okay, then the next thing we'll do is um, get the center stripe in and then add our pocket. Now, on the B flap, on the hinge edge, we're going to add another strip. It's also a half inch. Each one of the strips is a half inch. Of course, everything we do uh, for page four, we're gonna do on page five, just a mirror image, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our pocket. This is the last um, uh, interactive element that's gonna be added to this page. 
This pocket, again, is five and a half by four and a half. You're gonna score a half inch on three of the four sides. When you're finished, you're gonna have a four by four finished panel. Actually, that's not true. We still have two more things to add. I just remembered two photo mats. Okay, so this is just gonna butt right up against the hinge and come right over to the edge here. Just like so. And I've already covered a Graphic 45 regular size black tag and that's what's gonna go into this pocket. So I'll just leave that there for now. So the other thing we're going to add is we're gonna add a photo mat to extend this and there'll be um, a mat on both sides. So I had trimmed some pieces out before and then I don't know what I did with them. I think I got rid of them. <laughs> I misplaced them. So what we basically wanna do, I know it's really hard to see, so from let me get another piece of white paper. Black on black is difficult to see, I know. Okay, so right here we have a hinge and that's where the B flap is attached and it's a half inch. Then we added an additional half inch. So basically from this hinge over, we have one inch. We're going to attach a photo mat to that. And the way we wanna measure it is it's gonna overlap this, this piece right here, that's gonna be the anchor and then it needs to stop short of this hinge so this flap will close. So I'm just gonna rough this out really quick and I'll be right back. It's five and a quarter across, and then I think I'm gonna make it seven and a quarter tall. So basically a five by seven. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so now we're going to attach this, and then when you open the flap, this will come with it. So I'm gonna find the center line here and the center line on here, and then I'm gonna install it. Okay, there's the center line. And it's actually on this extension here. I'm actually drawing it and that's where it's gonna get attached. The center line here. Looks like three and five eighths, three and five eighths. Yep, okay. So I'm turning this right side up again. So the flap and the extension are to the left. We're gonna open this up and then we're gonna line up these two dots and we're gonna install it right here, okay? And I'm gonna keep it clear of the, um, the hinge here so that it doesn't get caught up in it, okay? I'm gonna use glue. I think it'll be a little more forgiving. and letting me sort of wiggle it around a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna line up that dot. And I'm gonna look left to right, see if I get it as straight as I can. And that looks really good, okay. So this is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. That's what this photo mat is right here. Now we're gonna open it up 
and I can add another photo mat on this side and the photo mat on this side we can make larger. Or I might just want to leave it the way it is. I was going to put um, an additional mat down on this side. And I st yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so it needs to be, I need a whole page. So we're going to make it seven and a quarter inches tall. So now it's the, it's going to be the same height as this, but I'm going to make it wider. I'm going to make it come across most of this panel. Okay, and let's see, it looks like we need to stop around here. Let's see how this works. This piece is going to be seven and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and it's going to go in just like this. So you have this nice big photo space. Now I'm not going to apply this right now because I want to put my designer paper down here and then layer this. So again, this is seven and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And the front piece is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Now, <clears throat> I glued this down, I shouldn't have done that. We should have put our decorator paper down here first. So I'm gonna figure out a way to get that in, but, um, and this is why I was advising that you watch ahead. My advice would be to decorate that strip, then to add this panel. And because I didn't use tape, I can't really lift it off. So I'm gonna figure out how to get around that. Um, I'll make it work. There's always a solution. But if you're watching ahead, it, it'll be, you'll, you'll benefit from watching ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this here, and then I'm gonna show you, I'll walk you through um, all the mechanisms, and then we'll get started on uh, adding the designer paper. Okay, so I've done this on another album. This, this part, um, the measurements are different for this one. I made each one of the panels larger because we're using an eight by 10. Uh, pocket page that means each one of these page, uh, panels is larger and I think it it's, uh, makes it easier to add your photos. Okay so when you get started you've got your pocket here uh, this will open uh, to the right and then it also opens to the left then this opens to the right and then you tug on this and it opens up You've got a photo mat here and it opens up and then you've got this photo mat and then this large space here. So that is the construction of, of page four and page five. So I'm gonna take a break and get my papers lined up. When I come back, we'll start decorating. I'm back, sorry about that. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do and I'm gonna do this a little bit different than page four because I learned a few things. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our half inch strips, I missed dinking that one, um, added. To the right hand side. Sorry, it's a little noisy outside. It's 4th of July, people are barbecuing and all that it was distracting me. So add your strip to the left-hand side. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna, we don't add it here yet. 
So we'll stop there. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to install flap A. Flap A is five and a half by eight, five and a half by eight, and you're gonna score a half inch on the five and a half inch side. Let me double check that, yep. And it's gonna get installed right about here. Before I do that, this is what I'm gonna do different. So let's do A and B together. So this is flap A, five and a half by eight. This is flap B, 10 by eight. You're gonna score it half inch and five and a half inches to make this. This hinge is gonna get installed one inch from the edge. So I did a reference line one inch in, and I'm gonna lay this in just like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna add the whole thing uh, to the pocket page. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it sideways so I can see left to right, top to bottom. Oops. Yeah. Wow, this I've got a little bit hanging off here, so I'm gonna turn that really quick. Even. Okay, so flap A, five and a half by eight, flap B, 10 by eight. So there we go. Now we're gonna pull in our pocket page again, and this is gonna get installed like so. And everything looks right. <clears throat> Except I don't have tape on here. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now, I put a half inch reference line here. You don't have to put that there, but part of the reason I put it there is because when I install this, I wanna make sure it's reaching over to the half inch mark, okay? So I put it there as a reference. I'm not gonna put a strip on it or anything. It's really just a reference. After we get A and B in, then we'll add uh, C. sticking to me. Okay, there we go. So it opens like so, okay? Now, flap C, which is five and a quarter by eight, is going to get attached flush to the edge of the page. like that. So now on the left hand side of the C flap we're going to add this strip of half inch wide paper. There we go. Turn it sideways so I can see end to end, top to bottom. Good. Okay, so this C flap is gonna fit right over the edge of the A flap. The B flap closes on top of C flap, like so. Now we have a half inch gap between this hinge line and the edge of this flap. We're gonna put our third strip right there. Now on page four, I um, added 
my photo mat before I did my designer paper, so I'm not gonna do that here, and hopefully you guys will get the benefit of that. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why as soon as I, as soon as I lay this in. So I'm just putting this strip right next to the hinge line here. Okay, it's right there. So the hinge is right there, okay? There we go. Okay, now the next thing we have is we have two photo mats. We're gonna put a photo mat on the, this side and a photo mat on this side. And the measurements are, we just went over them, but I'll do that again. On this side, it's five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. That's gonna get attached, centered right here, so that when you open this flap, this will travel with it. And then I'm gonna put another mat on the reverse side, and it's gonna be eight and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Eight and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Okay, so you can see that we're gonna add a, a photo mat here, and then on the back side, it'll be a larger fo photo mat. Sorry, a larger photo mat overlaying part of um, the C flap. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. It'll make more sense when I actually install it and add the de uh, designer paper. Now, rather than install this now, I want to get my decorator paper down and then add this so that I'm not trying to tuck paper behind the photo mats. So take your five and a quarter by seven and a quarter and your eight and a quarter by seven and a quarter and just set them aside. We will install them um, as we add our designer papers. Okay, so I need to uh, line up the designer papers and I'll be back shortly and we can start decorating this and finish the construction. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. I'll be back soon with the rest of uh, page five. Before we take a break and line up the designer paper, I forgot we still have one more element. It's the pocket, and the pocket is gonna go, it's gonna actually sit right on top of flap A, and um, it's gonna be on the opposite side of page four. Okay, now there's a hinge right here, so we're gonna nest this right against there and then just lay it down. And then we're gonna put a graphic 45 regular black tag in the pocket, just like we did on page uh, four. Okay. And there, there's our tag. Okay, when we get back, I'll have our decorator paper and then I'll also go over where we're gonna place our magnets to keep everything closed. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate. We are decorating page four and five of Well Groomed. So I've kind of laid out all my A sides so you get a, get a chance to look at what we're doing here. And um, something I did off camera was just add cardstock to the back of um, two of the cut aparts from the 12 by 12 collection. And then also I'm gonna use uh, the Graphic 45 tags in the pockets and I went ahead and covered these. So I used the Graphic 45 uh, die for these tags and then I wanted to point out that I used the eight by eight collection pack for these two and it matches this one and this is from the 12 by 12. So eight by eight for the tags, 12 by 12 for the page. Okay, so we're gonna set these aside for the moment and we'll work on getting these papers laid down. So this also, I went ahead and put cardstock on the back of it, uh, offline two, best friends, and this is from the 12 by 12 cut apart. There's a strip on one of the pages and I just cut it best friends forever and we're just gonna add that little detail to the pockets. 
and I did uh, paper back it with cardstock so it pops out a little bit better. Okay, so the yellow paper is from the 12 by 12 Patterns and Solids. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. So let's get started. And after we get down the pocket pieces, and well, we should go ahead and do it now. Let's set aside our papers and let's add our magnets. So the last time we were together, we finished constructing these, but we didn't add the magnets. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna put a magnet on this side and a magnet on this side right here. So it's gonna uh, be roughly right about there. So, and I wanna come in far enough away from the edge so I don't have any issues covering the magnet with um, designer paper. I gotta get my fat tape, here we go. That's right, I, got, I got, had to think that through. So I am going to place it right there. We're gonna close it. Okay, so we've located this magnet. Now we're going to locate this on the front, on the cover. <clears throat> on the inside cover, to be more specific. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on uh, page five. <laughs> there we go. It's not centered. I want to center it because then it softens the edge of the magnet. <clears throat> okay. There we go. And there we go. So we're going to do the same thing real quick on page five. <clears throat> So you're gonna need two sets of magnets for each page. Okay, and then gotta work that over a little bit, there we go. Okay, here we go. Hope everybody's doing well. It is. It has been 4th of July weekend here. It's been a good week. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna set page five aside and we're gonna go ahead and cover page four. drying quickly today. Okay. And now we're going to add these two yellow pieces and they should be trimmed out to fit. And that looks good. I 
I had inked them while I was offline too, so. So that is done. This is going to slip just ever so slightly into the pocket. Lovely, and then of course we've got our tags. And if you bought your uh, collection from us or your bundle from us, there's gonna be some ribbon and this is gonna be the ribbon I'm going to use on the tag. So there's this gingham um, black and the gingham yellow, and I like both, but the black pops out a little bit more. So I'm gonna use that here. So there we go. So we've got our A sides all in. So we'll be focused on the internal um, covering the inside when um, when we take after I take a break but we're gonna go ahead and finish uh, this page the a side on this page and the a on uh, page five I'm just eyeballing this it's gonna be centered and it looks like I'm going down about a half inch okay I think that looks really cute okay so I'm ready to set this aside and then we're gonna pull in page five. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up uh, page five. Sorry about my dog. I don't know what she's barking at, but my husband's home so he can deal with it. Um, yeah, it does have direction, but it's kind of hard to tell. It'd be very easy to, to turn it over. Okay, here we go. Just gonna use this so I can uh, see the edge of my pocket. Looks good. Okay, so that is done, and then we still need to, to add this little piece here, so I wanted to pull this in. I'm gonna flip them, and then I'm going to use my ruler, uh, sort of a straight edge to help me locate the second one, which is right here. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it and you know, just making a straight line from one side to the other. They're actually gonna be um, on opposite ends of each other. So it's okay if you don't have them perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna put them back in order. So this is page four, page five. 
Here's my tag that I had covered ahead of time. Okay, and then these are the two, um, two elements that I'm gonna put on the top to just kind of make this whole page pop. Um, I think I want the dog looking toward page four, so I think this is what I'm gonna do. So offline, I put cardstock behind these cut aparts, and then I also put uh, a layer of chipboard so they're a little bit more rigid and stand out. So now it's really just about placement. And I think I like that, so I'll probably place one. So the other thing is to do them offset. If we do them offset, here's the benefit. I like to try to let you guys know what I'm thinking, is we could still get a three by three photo here and here. Um, if we make them even, I, like, I don't like to always um, split everything in half. I think that looks too low. That would be about the midpoint. Mm, I'm not crazy about it. So I kind of go back to um, sort of the golden ratio where you, you know, split things um, to make it more pleasing aesthetically. And I think this is what I like. It's unlikely that I would place a photo on the front side, so this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> this must have slipped when I glued it because it's very close to the edge, so that's fine. And what I'm using is this um, graphics chipboard. It's the medium weight chipboard that I made the outside of the album with. And um, I'm going to make this level on my grid here so I can eyeball this. I like that. Um, and I just keep my scraps from when I trim out my um, albums and then I repurpose them to make I, uh, elements pop in the book. And I prefer it over foam because it's rigid. Um, for albums. Now, if I was doing a card, I like the foam because you can press it down and get it to fit in the envelope and then have it puff back up when you take it out. But for albums, I like it to stay rigid. And that is a tip that I got from the fabulous Ginger Rob a couple of years ago, probably four years ago now. It's been a while. Okay, now you could further embellish down here or do something and I, you know, this might be a good spot to put like a label for the event, you know, or the date. Okay, that's it for page four and five A sides. Um, I will add some ribbon um, and probably a charm to each one of these tags. So I'm gonna take a break and when I come back, we'll, I'll have the papers lined up for the inside of both of these pages. But before I go, I'm just gonna do a quick reminder. This opens to the right, closes, then opens to the left. This opens to the right, and then this is gonna open like so. So page four and five is going to have the most photo space for your album. And part of the reason I designed it that way is that way the weight um, of the book is gonna be centered on the spine and not on the outside edges. Um, so yeah, anyway, so I'll be back soon with the designer choices for the inside of both page four and five. Thanks. Okay, I've got some of the papers. We're on page four and we're gonna open the top flap to the right. And I've chose this pattern to go here. It is from the eight by eight collection pack. I'm using a strip of red in between them and that is from the patterns and solids. And then on the far right hand side, I'm gonna add this strip in which is going to pull these two strips back in. So this one was laid down when we when we did the A side. So I've added two strips, one from Pattern and Solid and one from the collection pack and again these are from the 8x8. And I think I've got everything measured and ready to go. The strips, both of them are cut at half inch. Okay. So I'm going to add my strip first and then um, I'll place, I'll double check and see if I need to trim the middle piece, but I think I've got it pretty darn close, if not right on. 
And I always recommend that you add your the thinnest strips first and then trim to fit the larger one. It's easier to manage in the trimmer if you need to trim it down. Trying to trim down a half inch strip is virtually impossible in my mind. I can't get it to sit still in the trimmer. Okay, so this is gonna go here and it looks like I've got it all trimmed out just right. Uh, almost like I planned it. Okay, where's my pick tool? In the wrong place. Oh, and I want to share with you, I wound up adjusting my magnet placement toward the center so that I could do this um, color blocking. If you're not doing color blocking where we placed the magnets earlier, it's fine. A lot of people ask me about my album sizes and they're usually eight and a half by eight and a half or eight by eight and a half by ten and a half. And um, the reason why there's always an eight in there somewhere is because uh, when I'm working with Graphic 45, they have the eight by eight collection packs. So if you try to do an album nine by nine, none of the eight by eight um, sheets are gonna fit on a page. You're always gonna have to add a strip to make it go the length or the width, or both. So that's kind of my thought process. It also um, lends itself very well to use eight and a half by 11 cardstock paper for your project. Um, and I felt like when I was using 12 by 12, I had so much cardstock waste. So just some things to think about if you're doing some design work on your own or if you're just curious. So anything under eight um, on either height or width works fine. And then if you go over eight, you can obviously, but if you go over eight, you have to uh, put more effort into designing um, the paper, coordinating the papers. And there's ways to work around that too. These two pages in particular are going to take a ton of paper. All right. Okay. That looks a little wide and the reason is that's a hinge. So there's a little more space in between the two. All right, so that is it. Now I'm going to pull in page five. We're gonna do that real quick. I, this one's gonna open to the left. We're gonna get our strips in first. It looks like I didn't ink one of them. Well, as usual, it's always nice to hear um, hear from you guys in the comments. Um, just the other day, I did the uh, Ciao Bella new release video, and then um, and very soon uh, we're gonna have some pre-orders for the the next set of Graphic Forty Five. Uh, collections. Uh, we don't know what they are yet. We're very anxious to hear from them. Oops, this goes on this side. And I also need ink. I'm using uh, Powder Puff in Mahogany. And I think it really goes very well with all the graphics. I always use the darkest one that they have in brown. Um, if you like to uh, distress into the patterns, 
I would recommend going lighter, but I really just use it to knock off this white edge. So, and it's especially stands out when you're putting it on black cardstock. I don't know if I'd bought, well, I do, it's a habit now, but it's really not necessary if you're putting it on white cardstock. And I don't really, I never use white cardstock with graphic because they're whites. As you can see, this is very white, are very creamy. They're not, uh, they're not bright whites. And the core of the cardstock is. So I'll use um, craft, black, or cream when I'm building a graphic 45. Some of Stamparia's collections will work on a bright white. And, ooh, that's not quite the right size. Hmm. Did I put it in the, no, that's right. So I'm gonna have to find, hopefully I've got another piece of this, otherwise I'm gonna have just a bigger border than I wanted. And I've got a, a workaround, and I'm gonna go ahead and lift my, my red court half inch, because my workaround is just to widen this strip. I'm gonna pull it up while it's still wet. So if I don't have another piece of this, then what I'm gonna do is just make that red strip a little bit wider. So, and like as usual, I like to leave all my ears in there so you guys can learn from my mistakes and you know, either fix anything that you've done or just know that you can always go back and look at other videos to find solutions. Okay, I cut a strip and um, it wasn't off by much, but I'll show you the before. So this is half inch and then this is five eighths. So basically I had two of these eight by eights um, that I spread across page four and five, but I had already used one of the uh, eight by eights for the red somewhere else. So I didn't have the third sheet, which normally you do on an eight by eight. So the solution is to add an eighth inch to the middle strip, problem solved. And then we'll have those nice even borders again. Normally the center piece is too wide and I have to trim it down a little, but I miscalculated on this side. I did it right on the first one. So I'm not sure how I managed that, but I did. Oops. The one thing about using strips this thin is, let me make sure I'm out of the hinge, um, is they can go down wavy. So you gotta pay attention to that. And I think that's pretty darn good. I'll take it. All right, I feel like I've been away for so long. I don't know what my next project is. It's gonna be a surprise for all of us, I guess. Next couple of days, I'm sure Julie will have something lined up for me. Um, and I'll share that as soon as I know, but I'm not sure that we've got so much new paper coming in. Blue Fern, Stamperia, and Graphic are all um, releasing products very in very close proximity. So we'll have a lot to choose from. Okay, and of course, um, Christine over at uh, the Quiet Paper Cat, Cat Company will be doing some uh, projects as well. So if you haven't already, you know, head over there and subscribe to her channel. I create a playlist for her projects so that um, you can see them on our channel, but if you click on it, it just links you right back to her. Um, and we, uh, she does albums for us uh, quite frequently. So usually in a slightly smaller format, but they're always gorgeous. Um, and she, tends to be more along the Stamperia side. So most of her projects will be with that paper. I'll always do the Graphic 45, but occasionally I'll pick up some other paper brands too, like Ch Chow Bella, and, uh, and I forgot to say that too. Chow Bella is also coming out with new paper. So that is page four and five, and so that we're still got a long way to go, but basically what we did was we covered this part. So you can see I widened this slightly, but it's really not that obvious. Okay, and then when we come back, we're gonna do 
this spread and then we'll also start looking at, at attaching the photo mats and then at the very end <laughs> we'll open this one more time and we'll add something here and then we still have all this space in here so like I said these two pages are going to take a lot of paper and they will have room for a ton of photos and I'm thinking I'm toying around with the idea of doing two walkthroughs one um, with photo mats and one without, so you guys could see where I would place the photos. Give me some feedback and let me know what you think about that. Talk to you guys soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and uh, uh, we're continuing to work on page four and five. Um, so the last time we were together, we did um, the right open flap. Now we're going to focus on the left open flap. So I've selected these two patterns to go right here. This is from the 12 by 12 and this is from the patterns and solids. And then I've also selected the same pattern from the 12 by 12 to go on the flip side of this flap so we have this nice layout. Now, when I was constructing it and also in the banner, I say to not install the photo mats um, until you get your designer paper down. This is the paper I've selected and it is from the 8x8 collection pack. So it's a strip from the 8x8 collection pack, and I know that because of the size of the circles. So I'm gonna lay that down first, and it's actually on this hinge area. So there's a little flap here, and that's where we're gonna place this blue strip. under here so I can see my edges. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now we're going to install this. There is a direction on here. So there's some words behind the flowers, so take a close look. Make sure you have the orientation correct. And that, of course, that your um, pocket page is right side up as well. Now we're going to add this panel all the way to the right. And while I was away taking a break, I trimmed and inked the edges. And as a reminder, I am using powder puff in mahogany. Now you can see we still have the inside spread yet to do. Not quite ready for that. Let's go ahead and add this blue right here. This is again from the patterns and solids. This is from the 8 by 8 collection pack. I fit this first because I know it goes in one way better than the other. So I'm going to... Okay, it goes in better the other way. I had tested it earlier. Yep. Okay, 
so we did make some progress. We got these in and these in. So we need to still look for these. So I'm gonna take a break real quick and catch up on page five. I'll be right back. Okay, I've uh, trimmed out uh, page five and I've got it inked and, and ready to go. So as, as you recall, we did this first. Now we're gonna work on the inside. So trim this out and ink my edges and verify that I've got the paper going in the right orientation. And you know what? I gotta trim it. It's on the hinge. It's on the hinge, so I'm gonna have to reset that. I thought I tested that. Okay, let's go ahead and double check this. And I, that was the other option, but I didn't really like the white with the black, so I went with the solid. I need to take a little sliver off this side. <clears throat> Put this off this side. I'm going to ink where I trimmed. how we did. Just right. <laughs> I don't know why I always try to get it off with my fingernail. It just doesn't work. After I do this, then we'll do that blue strip. And when we're finished with that, hopefully this will all be dry enough that I can uh, trim it to fit and then um, get it get it laid in. Okay, so we're going to open this up. Let's try. It. Let's check this one out. It looks like it's good. It's not in the hinge area. Let's go ahead and get our strip in. It's going to go on this flange area. It's a little bit too much glue. dry. It's a little bit of glue here. Let's cover this back up so I don't, uh, it doesn't stick. Let's see what we need to do. I don't know. It's really tight. I'm worried that it's going to buckle. So I'm going to take a slight sliver off.
let's see. That's fine. So let's ink the edge we trim, ink the edge that we had trimmed. Oh, I guess I didn't make the whole thing. Somehow I missed it completely. Okay, now we're ready. So the reason, I don't know if I've ever, I haven't mentioned it in a long time. The reason I put glue on top of the tape is otherwise when you put this down, the tape grabs the paper and you can't adjust it at all. It will tear your paper. So I put a little glue and then what that does is it holds it slightly off the tape until I get it positioned and then I push it all the way down. Okay, so this is going to close like that and like that. So we did one, two, three panels and this strip. So the next time we come back, um, we are going to work on this layout for both page four and five. And I do have um, more of this pattern, which I'm going to pull back in so that, and we'll do something unique here. But I didn't have, um, the pattern was cut this way and the words are running uh, up and down. So I turned it this way and just made, took that strip and made it work. So I'm going to do some color blocking here, just so you know. So we're gonna do the same thing on page four and I haven't decided what to do here just yet. So I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, this is Daphne and we're gonna finish up page four and five right now. So I'm gonna set page five away. And uh, so we, we did a, a great deal on this page, but we haven't finished. So as you recall, we've got the inside here done and then uh, also the inside here. So the next thing we're going to work on is this layout. So what I planned is this photo mat and it's gonna get attached to this flange right here. This photo mat is five by seven five by seven and I'm going to attach this designer paper and this designer paper is from the Patterns and Solids collection pack. Okay, so again it's five by seven. Okay, now we are going to apply it right here and I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, so the important thing is that you can close this flap on top of it when you're done. So I'm going to apply it right about here. So I'm gonna put a um, quick reference line and I know my glue goes here. Down to here. Okay, there we go. So again, this was five by seven. Now on the flip side, I'm gonna pull my papers all back in. On the flip side, we're going to cover this mat and then we're gonna add this. So this mat is going to have these two bits on it. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. This is the rest of the layout, sorry. This is a wide layout, so i got to shift some things around. I believe we're going to go like this. Yep. So that's what it's going to look like, and then this is going to get attached and come across and cover most of this. So let's start. Let's go ahead and start from the right, and we're going to actually work backwards to the left.
there is some air conditioner noise in the background. I apologize, but I, I just can't wait anymore. The heat's been really bad, and um, I'm way behind on getting this out. So it's the best I can do. Okay. And this is going to go here, and I'm going to trim it to fit. And it looks like I need to take off just a little bit. Okay, we'll do a quick test, see if that was enough. And no, oh, I need to take a little more off the side. That should do it. So let me give you some rough estimates. So this is about four. This is five and a half. And then you just have to trim it to fit so that you've got a nice border in between. It's upside down. that over and scoot over. I'm going to lay down this piece first and then I'll trim this to fit as required. And I'm going to put this right here so I can see the edge. Um, this is from, I can't remember. Hang on. I think it's from the 8x8. Eight eight. No, it's from the 12x12. 12 12x12. By 12. 12 by 12. Okay, and I can see I need to do some trimming. by 12. I forgot to mention that's also from the 12 by 12. Okay, there we go. That's in. So the next thing we're going to do is lay in this piece and we're just going to square it off this corner right here and this is, I wrote it down somewhere, it's eight and a half by seven, eight and a half, seven by eight and a half, sorry, <laughs> that was hard to get out. So let's go ahead and lay this in first.
Okay, we're just gonna match it up to these two corners. And then lay it in. There we go. Fold that over and then just press this all into place. Or this way. What do you guys think? I like this. Let's do it this way. This is two and a half. Two and a half by seven and three eighths. And it just happened to be a scrap I had, and then I cut the other piece to fit. Okay, now we're going to trim this piece to fit. And that's going to be the end of page four. There we go. So let's put this whole thing back together and then we'll open it together. Okay, so this is page four, which opens to the right, then opens to the left, and then we have this. We're going to tug on this, and we've got a five by seven mat here, or five by, not seven, I think it's seven and a half. Uh, oh, I gave you the wrong measurement. It is five by seven. Five by seven. And I told you that this was seven and a half, but it's seven by eight and a half. Seven by eight and a half. So you have a larger mat on the back side than on the front side. So that makes it kind of fun. Then you have tons of photo space in here. This is the center of the pocket page. And you got lots of photo space here and here. So this will close, 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 and then again. Okay, so that's page four. We're gonna replicate that on page five. So that should go together pretty quickly and I always have to go back and check. <laughs> so this, goes down here. We can go ahead and glue this down. That's one less floating piece. It's already inked. This is the five by seven photo map. Okay, it's going to get adhered right here on this flange. It's going to be centered. Let me draw a reference line for my glue. Thank you. 
Okay. Shoot that just a little bit. Okay, that's done. Okay, so the next thing is this blue piece, and then we should have here it is, our paw prints. Or, yeah, that looks like it's right. Okay, let's get the paw prints in. We'll need to trim this down just slightly. Oops, shifted on me. Everybody's doing good, good. I don't even know what I'm working on next. I gotta check with you. I've got a a lot to work on. I just don't know what order. We we have um, three new collections from Stamperia, not counting the Japan, which is on its way too, and three collections from Chow Bella and one from Blue Fern. So and then. Coming soon will be another release from Graphic 45. So we we have had our hands full. Stamperia has really ramped up their release cycle. Um, I think they've they've got one more cycle this year than they had last year. And then um, we're also carrying more of the Chabella. So it's a little bit of both. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this in. And then this is the, the last piece. And I can tell I'm going to need to trim it down a little. And then we'll add that photo mat on the back side. And it is seven by eight and a half. So that looks good. That should do it. Perfect. Takes a while, but it's some point you get to where you can just see it. You don't have to mark it. Um, some days are better than others too. Okay. So, on the way I designed this, this is a five by seven, and then this side is a seven by eight and a half. You don't have to do it that way. The other option would be to just cover the back of this um, and not come into the page. But I kind of liked that idea, so that's what I did. And now I don't know what I did with my... Maybe I didn't trim one. So I need to cut a seven by eight and a half, and I'll be right back. Okay, that was easy. We're gonna attach it here, and then we're gonna cover it. If you just covered this, let me see what it is. I think it's four inches. 
no, it's four and a quarter inches. So you could get um, four by four, a four by four, or a four by five right here. But if you do this, you can get a very large scale photo. So it's a, it's just two different methods. Or you can put multiples on here as well. So I'm just marrying up these corners to make it flush and then we're going to press it into place and now we have this nice big large photo mat and then we're going to add this to make sure it's right side up. It is. Okay, now I'm missing one piece of paper. Oh, I see what I did with it now. So that's page four, and I'm looking, here it is. <laughs> I was looking for this, it was inside page four. Okay, I need to trim it to fit. How would we do? Not enough, a little more. There it is. Lovely. Let's get our cap on. So that is the end of page five. So some of my pages in this album are simple because this one is complex. Um, it has a lot going on um, and it took a lot of paper to make this. So I'm liking it. I'm pretty happy. What do you guys think? Did I do it the same way or did I reverse this? I can't remember. <laughs> Oh, that's the way I did it. I put the black on the blue. Okay, that's it. So we are done with this page. I It's going to take me forever to upload it because it was a long one. <laughs> Sorry, it was so long that I made up for it by having really short pages um, and fast videos for some of the other pages. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you when we get started on page six.